The Carolina Hurricanes become the latest NHL team to clinch a playoff berth. We'll break down who can clinch, who has clinched, and when. Plus, we have our women's hockey spotlight and a big weekend ahead of NHL action. All that and more on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to the Friday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. I'm Gil Martin. You can find me on Twitter at Ice Wars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. And I'm joined every Friday by Rachel Donner. You can find her on Twitter at R Miriam. Rachel, happy Friday to you. Happy Friday, man. We're starting to get into this playoff mode. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. We are uh, getting to the point where Teams are clinching, and that is good news. And last night, it was the Carolina Hurricanes becoming the latest team to clinch a playoff spot. But ironically, they do it with a loss. Yeah, I always think that's so funny. And and obviously, down the road in the playoffs, it's a who cares thing. But uh, they clinched the playoff spot because the Florida Panthers lost their game. (laughs) And so... It's kind of like, yay, we clinched a playoff spot, but now we have to deal with the fact that we just lost our game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it's, it, it kind of mutes the celebration a little bit. But uh, either way, Carolina is in, and they're still battling with the New Jersey Devils primarily for first place in the Metropolitan Division. And as we know, Boston has already clinched a playoff spot been a while actually since boston has clinched a playoff spot and they just keep winning five in a row uh at this point 115 points and counting but you know these two they're the first two but they're certainly not going to be the last two to clinch yeah absolutely and it is interesting you know as we've been saying the eastern conference has been where sort of the power is in the nhl overall and you know we're looking at boston having clinch the canes now and the third team to clinch will likely be the devils and you know they're also in the east so we'll have like multiple teams in the east before anybody in the west gets on that list as of yet which you know like i said it's been indicative of how this season has gone overall yeah it has been the the power rankings if you look at just points I think it's still the top five or six teams in the league all reside in the East, but you would think that would mean most of the bottom teams should also reside in the East, but it doesn't always work that way. Yeah. And, you know, with the the Devils on tap against Buffalo tonight, a a little uh, preview of our Games of the Week segment later in the show, but it's a big one. And, you know, that could get them uh, to the 100th, point mark which is a big deal for the devils and clinch that playoff position and uh i think that you know this is a big deal for the the devils and with buffalo fading i I think it'll be a good opportunity for them to hit both at the same time and that would be a much more positive way to get the the playoff position and you know, with the Canes and Devils battling for that top spot in the division, it'll be a big deal. It will be. And it's an important game because New Jersey comes in two points behind Carolina, but Carolina has a game in hand. So you don't want to fall, you know, two points back with two games in hand. When you're talking about having 10, 11 games left on your schedule, every point is precious. And You know, the the Devils remain, I think, just a great story this year because I don't think too many people expected them to hit 100 points and to make the playoffs so emphatically this year. 
Yeah, I, I think so. I think, you know, they've been for the last several years, one of those teams that you expected to take a step forward, but they've taken a huge step forward this year and, you know, competing for that division title, even if they don't, you know, win it, I think it's a win-win for them. And for the Canes, they're like battling to stay on top, which is, you know, having made the playoffs five years in a row, you know, they're a mainstay at this point. And you have the devils who are the scrappy uh, new kids uh, around. And so I I like that interesting dynamic in in this battle for the end of the season here. Yeah, it's an interesting juxtaposition of uh, two teams. And and you sort of wonder, you know, how much longer do the Canes hold on and, and be one of the top teams in the Metro? And then you, on the flip side, how good can the devils become? Because they are such a young talented, fast team. They haven't reached their full potential yet. And, you know, in a year or two, they could be one of the dominant teams in this league. I know. I just keep thinking that Luke Hughes isn't even there yet. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's exactly correct. You know, last week we we talked about players who are trying to get to 50 goals. And one week later, it's coming a little bit more into focus And it looks like the next player to reach that mark will be David Pasternak of Boston. 49 goals right now with, uh, well, let's just say 11 games left to play. He needs one goal. He's right on the cusp of reaching that 50-goal plateau. Yeah, you have to think he's going to do it in the next couple of games. I mean... You know, the way he's been playing, the way Boston's been playing. And I think that his team will be eager to get him to that plateau as well. So, um, you know, obviously 50 goals are 50 goals. Like, uh, you can't take that away from him no matter what. I hope he gets it on a regular goal and not an empty netter, (laughs) I think. Like, for those milestone goals. Uh, Just like we had Connor McDavid get to the 60 goal mark on an overtime winner i think you know you you want to hit that that mark in style no question about that and and you know even if you don't the goal will get better as you get older but uh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh miko rantanen also closing in he has 10 games left and needs three goals he's at 47 so the colorado avalanche uh forward very, very close and and obviously, uh, you know, leading the Western Conference if you're not named McDavid. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think you know, he was one of the guys I talked about last week that I wasn't so sure if he was going to get there uh, just because of the way the offense is distributed on that team. But, uh, you know, I, maybe I'm bumping up my estimation a little bit. I think he can do it. Yeah, three three goals in 10 games. That's uh, not a sure thing, but a, a pretty good bet. And then Braden Point of Tampa Bay now at 45 goals. But the Lightning have played a lot of games already. They have nine games left. He needs five. You know, that, that could go either way. Yeah, I think, uh, like you were saying uh, before we started recording today's sh- show, I think for some of these next few guys... I think it's really, are they going to have one game that's really stellar, like get a hat trick or, you know, get a couple of goals in two different games or, or something to to kind of stack the deck in their favor. Um, I think that's kind of the situation with the Braden Point. And I think he can do it. Like, don't get me wrong. I just think that's really the scenario we're looking at here uh, for him to get that point. Yeah, I, I think that's spot on. And then uh, will the Edmonton Oilers have, two 50 goal scorers this year 10 games left on their schedule and uh dry right now needs six goals in 10 games to join Connor mcdavid in the 50 goal club yeah i think this is a similar situation again i think he can do it i think you know leon dry has had tremendous games in the past i think uh, you know, it'll just be one of those luck of the draw things in terms of the right place at the right time with him getting those scoring opportunities. Yeah. So a few players take Thompson also uh, sort of on the cusp could go either way. We'll see how it plays out as we continue our 50 goal watch here on the Friday edition 
of the Locked On NHL podcast. We have got a lot more to get to on today's show. We'll be joined by Erica Ayala for our Women's Hockey Spotlight. And we've got a very exciting week ahead in the NHL. But first, if you're hiring, you need Indeed. Because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. And with Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. You can start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. This offer is valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. All right, let's turn our attention now to Erica Ayala with the Women's Hockey Spotlight. Hey, hockey fans, Erica L. Ayala here, and I am here to preview the Isabel Cup final between the Toronto Six, which is the number two seed coming in from the regular season, and the number four seed, the Minnesota Whitecaps. Now first, let's go over how these teams got here. For the Minnesota Whitecaps, out of seven teams, only four get in, and they were the last in. Not only was Minnesota the low seed coming into the playoffs, but they were on an eight-game skid. That's right. Eight-game losing streak heading into the postseason to play in the semifinals the top-seeded Boston pride and yet somehow minnesota pulled off a miracle in a three-game series they swept the boston pride in the clincher of the series goaltender amanda levier made 47 of 48 saves that's right she only let in one goal as her offense powered the minnesota whitecaps to the 2023 Isabel Cup final. Now, the Minnesota Whitecaps were an expansion team in the 2018-19 season, and they won the Isabel Cup in their inaugural season. However, it's been a slow decline since that first year. They've always had great goaltending from Amanda Levier, but at times have struggled with their defensive structure and maybe more so defensive discipline. Now, that's not to say that they haven't had great blue liners, including veteran Amanda Boulier, but they just wanted to be a, a more run-and-gun team. And as the league got better, especially on the defensive side and in net, the Minnesota Whitecaps struggled a bit to get past some amazing goaltending. So the Minnesota Whitecaps, if you like underdogs, you might want to root for them. But beware. The final for the Isabel Cup, named after Lady Isabel, the daughter of Lord Stanley, who, of course, the Stanley Cup is named after. They are an offensive powerhouse. So we talked about Amanda Levier. If you're looking at scoring, you have to look at Jonna Albers. She is an amazing offensive powerhouse. She plays well in all three zones, doesn't get enough credit for what she does defensively in particular, but Jonna Albers in game one of the semifinal alone scored a shorthanded goal. <laughs> she scored an empty net goal and she scored on the power play. She has quick speed. She's got great strength on the puck and can really make Swiss cheese out of any defense. So that's Minnesota. But who are they going up against? The number two seed overall, the Toronto Six. And similarly to the Whitecaps, the MO for the Toronto Six in the last few seasons has been run and gun and have a good goaltender behind them. So we'll start there. Elaine Chuli, just like Levier has won goaltender of the year in the league in the past. Elaine Chuli got a three nothing shutout 
putting away the Connecticut whale for the Toronto Six to clinch a spot into the final in game three. The Toronto Six had to go to a game three because the Connecticut whale, a very disciplined team, was able to be effective on the power play. And if there's an Achilles heel for the Toronto Six, it is that they can be undisciplined when it comes to taking penalties. But as defender Soraya Tinker said during game three, when we are five on five, they can't hang with us. Kind of paraphrased it a little bit, but that's how Toronto wants to play. Now, Minnesota, not the greatest team on the power play, but I am very curious, especially since it's playoff hockey and it's a one game final, how special teams is going to factor in. Now, another thing you need to know about Toronto, their defenders are pretty tall and they skate well. Toronto has been a team that, whether it's Tinker, as I just mentioned, Katie Tabin or Lindsay they get a lot of productivity from their defense and that makes them dangerous in transition because you can spring players like Brittany Howard, Daryl Watts, who joined the team mid season. And of course, uh, Michaela Kava, who put on heroics in game two to get them equal in the three game series. So lots of options up front for the Toronto six, which are really gonna cause problems for Minnesota if again, they don't find discipline defensively. That being said, the Boston pride, the top team in the league with a nearly plus 50 goal differential, couldn't find their way through Amanda Levier and the Minnesota Whitecaps. So as far as predictions, I'm just going to say it like this. We're going to get some really good hockey. And if you want to find out more, head over to premierhockeyfederation.com. The final will be in Tempe, Arizona at Mullet Arena. Now, the Arizona Coyotes are hosting the Colorado Avalanche in the afternoon. And then this will be an evening tilt 6 p.m. local time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. You can also find it on ESPN2 and TSN. Now, I will be at the arena. I'm already in Arizona, and I will be doing some stuff for those attending in person. So if you see me around, come say hi. Either way, this is going to be a great show for the Premier Hockey Federation. Before I turn you back over to Rachel and Gil, a few other things that you need to know. The Premier Hockey Federation and the Professional Hockey Writers Association have partnered up and yours truly is going to be the chair of a new women's hockey chapter. And we are going to vote for the first time officially through the Pro uh, Professional Hockey Writers Association for MVP. So who are some MVP candidates? Well, you've got Lauren Gable, 20 goals, 20 assists in her first season in the PHF. She plays for the Boston Pride. Kareen Schroeder, you want to talk about making saves. She had at least eight, uh, excuse me, at least four of her eight shutouts in the regular season where she was making 35 plus saves for the Boston Pride. And then you have Kennedy Marchment, before ending her season with the Connecticut Will against Toronto in the semifinals, including the postseason, she was on a 20-game point streak to boon the Will into third place. For Outstanding Player of the Year, a little bit of a different award, you have Marchment, Gable, and Schroeder once again. Defender of the Year, Callie Flanagan from the Boston Pride, Sydney Morin, who will play for the Minnesota Whitecaps Sunday night, and Mintu Tuominen from the Metropolitan Riveters. Goaltender of the Year, of course, Levier and Chuli are finalists. And then you add, of course, Kareen Schroeder. Newcomer of the Year, Anne-Sophie Betty from the Montreal Force, as well as Lauren Gable and Brittany Howard, who I mentioned, plays for the T6. Rookie of the Year. Now, this is a new one. This is for a player who's a true rookie with no pro experience. So Lauren Gable, for example, doesn't qualify because she's played in the PWHPA. But rookie of the year would be one of her line mates, 
and former college teammate Elizabeth Giguere from the Boston Pride. Kareen Schroeder is a true rookie. And Natalie Snodgrass, who, along with John Albers, is definitely a player to watch on Sunday for Minnesota. The Denelang Award, named after a player that unfortunately in season one went down with an injury during the Winter Classic. That was the first and unfortunately last time we ever saw Wim play uh, a showcase during the Winter Classic. Um, but the Denelang Award, you've got Lauren Kelly, who went down with an injury for the Boston Pride earlier, Lovisa Bernson from the Buffalo Buttes, Casey Anderson from the Metropolitan Riveters, Jonna Albers from the Minnesota Whitecaps, and Sophie Pate from the Montreal Force, and Brianne Wilson-Bennett from the Toronto Six. BWB, number 11, another player to watch come Sunday. So I got you through the Isabel Cup final, a little bit of a preview, and some awards that are coming up. I really hope you tune in. We've got some great hockey, and my only complaint is that the final isn't a series as well, but hopefully we'll get there soon. Well, this has been Erica L. Ayala, your regular host of Locked on Kraken, giving you the Women's Hockey Showcase. Gil, and Rachel, thanks so much for having me, and I'll catch you in another two weeks. And then by then, we'll have a champion, but we'll also be getting for the IIHF Women's Worlds happening in Brampton, Ontario. Can't wait to talk more hockey soon. And thanks once again to Erica Ayala for our bi-weekly Women's Hockey Spotlight. And we've got a lot more to come on this episode, a very important and very busy weekend of hockey action ahead. But first, Rachel, why don't you tell us about FanDuel? The tournament is heating up and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and sign up today to claim your no sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down that net. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss your shot at a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. All right, we have got a busy weekend of hockey ahead. And as is usual for this league, it's very Saturday-centric this weekend. Yes. A lot of Saturday games, but a few games uh, tonight. And one that we did touch on, the Devils with a chance to clinch the playoffs in Buffalo. And the Sabres have been reeling lately. But if, if you think about it, for a young team that hasn't been through a, a, a playoff push yet, it's not shocking that, you know, they would struggle a little bit down the stretch. Yeah. So based on our 50 goal scoring discussion, plus the devil's playoff scenario, let's go for a New Jersey devil devil's playoff clinching, but Tage Thompson gets on the board. There you <laughs> go. A win-win. A win-win for both teams. Uh, Islanders in at the Blue Jackets. Islanders, one of the three teams in the thick of that wild card spot. They yeah. need the two points. Columbus uh, playing a little better as of late, but they're still in Bedard territory. Yeah, absolutely. That is what they are going for at this point. And then Colorado also in the thick of the playoff hunt. They are hosting Arizona. Colorado has to keep on winning. Yeah, and I believe this is the game for Arizona that they would be officially eliminated with a loss. So that's good for them on the Bedard side of things. Yeah, got to make that official. So those are the three games tonight. But Saturday, 15 games on the schedule. And you start off with the matinee, Tampa Bay at Boston. That is always an exciting matchup. And uh, Boston keeps on winning. Tampa Bay kind of you know, a little less consistent than I expected them to be this time of year. Yeah, and going into Boston is always really tough, uh, especially this season. And I think that this is going to feel like a playoff game, like hands down. I, I really think that this is going to be a fun one to watch. And, you know, for Tampa Bay fans, I think a good barometer. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a good test heading into uh, the playoff stretch drive. How about Seattle in Nashville? Nashville uh, was doing really well a week ago, struggled a little bit this week, but still hanging on in that playoff hunt. And Seattle is one of the teams they're battling for wild card spots. Yeah, having Seattle above them in the standings means that this is an absolute make or break game for the Nashville Predators and for Seattle, who maybe wants to try and sneak back into that top three in the division. It's important for them as well. Four o'clock Eastern time, Winnipeg in L.A. to take on the Kings, the Jets. Got to get some points. And, you know, you look at the records here. Both teams have the same number of wins, <clears throat> but the Kings are seven points ahead because they have seven more loser points than the Jets. Mm -hmm. Man, got to love those loser points. <laughs> <laughs> or not. <laughs> yes, I guess, depending on uh, your perspective there. But, yeah, I think, you know, with the Kings, you know, I, I think – the separation between Vegas and the, and the Kings is starting to, you know, get a little wider, but Kings still have a game in hand on Vegas and could conceivably catch them for that division title. And so there's definitely motivation for them in this game. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, wanting to stay above Edmonton. And I think that, you know, this is a really important game for both teams and, you know, look to see what Winnipeg can do in this one. Two more games that affect the wild card in the East, the Islanders hosting Buffalo. That's a five o'clock Eastern time start. And then the Florida Panthers at the same time uh, hosting the New York Rangers. Both games have big time playoff implications. Oh, yeah, especially for, you know, the Florida Panthers here coming off that loss. Uh, I think that, you know, they really need to just turn it around real quick and get back into it. But, um, you know, Rangers at Florida is always an interesting game. I have been to one of those before down in South Florida, and mm -hmm. it feels like a Rangers home game. I'm going to tell you just because of the New Yorkers that have since moved down to Florida. And so... You know, I, I think the atmosphere for this one should be really interesting. But again, for Florida, this is a, a game with some really big implications. Yeah, no question about it. And they are so much better at home than they are on the road. So let's see if that helps them out against the Rangers. How about the Minnesota Wild in the thick of the battle for first place in the Central uh, hosting the Chicago Blackhawks also at five o'clock Eastern time? Yeah, the Wild, who just faced the Flyers and, and lost in a shootout, did not play well in that game. Um, they've been really successful on the road, though, and still picked up the loser point in, in that game. And I think, you know, getting a home reset against a team like Chicago should help them kind of reset a little bit. But yeah, I, I think that their outing against the Flyers was certainly nowhere near their best. A lot of turnovers in that game. And so you would hope they could improve things against Chicago. Good game. Uh, Toronto in Carolina. That's a seven o'clock Eastern time start in Carolina for Hockey Night in Canada. Uh, you know, two teams jockeying for playoff position and for Carolina, they're still hoping to win their division. Yeah. And, you know, I think that, you know, these teams, as the standings currently look, would not face each other in the playoffs until the second round. And so I think this is, you know, a good way for them to kind of feel each other out in terms of how that could look should both teams uh, move on. I think, you know, obviously for Toronto, that's a big mountain to climb. <laughs> But I think, you know, Toronto is definitely looking to come in and uh, show that they are capable of that this year. And how better to do that than winning against, a, you know, a top team in the other division on the road. Vancouver heading to Dallas to take on the Stars. And like we said, Minnesota and Dallas in that big battle for first place. So Dallas needs the points for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, obviously Jason Robertson is the big story. There continues to be the top star on that team, pun intended. And, uh, 
I, I think you know he's been carrying the team for a while now and is so much fun to watch and and you know let's see him do that for the Dallas Stars and and win that division. The ABC nationally televised game in the United States, Ovechkin versus Crosby, aka Washington at Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh so inconsistent as they battle oh. for one of those two remaining playoff spots in the East. What what is going on with the Penguins? Yeah, it's been a, a tough road for them, and you know they're just so. Uh, uh, like when they play really well, like, you know, they play really well, like when they have a good game, but when they have a bad game, it just looks dreadful and they can't do anything out there. And right now, you know, they are in that second wild card spot, but with Florida only one point behind them, um, you know, the Pens are four, five, and one in their last 10. And you look at all the other top teams, you know, as we're approaching the playoffs, they're hitting their groove and are winning a lot more than they're losing overall. And like, this is not the way, you know, you don't want to limp into the playoffs like this. Yeah, no question about that. Vegas and Edmonton, big game out West and uh, Edmonton being at home, you know, they have a chance to try to make things really tight in that division. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, this will be maybe one of those games that Leon Dreisaitl can rack up a couple of extra <laughs> points and, and get a couple of goals toward that 50. Sunday, five games, but to me, the biggest one, Boston and Carolina. Right now, the battle of the two first place teams in the Eastern Conference, and that should be fun to watch. Oh, sure. I think, uh, yeah, that will be a, a lot of fun. And then we have Toronto and Nashville, 6 o'clock Eastern time in the Music City. Again, two good teams, and Nashville needs the points to try to hang around in their playoff hunt. Yeah, I think this will sort of be the decision maker for Nashville, obviously depending on what they do earlier in the weekend. But, you know, should they win that first game? This will be another huge one for them. But if they lo lose that first game and then, you know, face Toronto, I think this will be like the final straw for them. Yeah, it'll be a must win situation for them mm -hmm. for sure. Well, we want to thank everyone for making Locked On NHL your first listen today. Now make your second listen game to game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every contest from across the National Hockey League with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NHL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. That's going to do it for this episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. I'll be back Monday with three of our local hosts covering the biggest stories from around the league. Until then, have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe, and thanks for listening to the Locked On NHL podcast.